Straighten up that line. You, one-fifth in the back. Drop and give me one hole. One-fifth, two-fifth, three-fifth, four-fifth, one hole. At ease, fifths. Guys, it's Miss Hampton. Uh, this is going to be your Fraction Boot Camp Part 1 video. We're just going to talk about some things that you learned in third and fourth grade about what a fraction is. So the biggest concept that you learn in third and fourth grade is that a fraction is a part of a whole. Part of a whole. For you as a fifth grader, that means it is a number that is less than one, but it's still more than nothing. So all these fractions we're talking about are between zero and one. So um, another way you can think about this is that it's a number that shows equal parts of a whole or like a set of objects. So a number that shows equal parts of a whole or a set of objects. Okay, so let's do some models to kind of show what these, what these definitions mean. Um, so I'll put a little part under here called models. This would be if uh, we were to show the fraction 1 fourth, for example, as a part of a set. So maybe you have four cookies or four circles or four whatevers. Um, if I wanted to show that I had one out of four parts, that would be one out of four. Or you might see it as a fraction bar. These are very popular in fifth grade. We probably all have them hanging on our whiteboards right now. Uh, my fraction bar would have four parts, and if we're only talking about one of those parts, that would also show one fourth. Or you might see it as a circle split into four parts, and only one of those parts is shaded. Like whenever we talked about pizza. Or you might see it as a number line. Usually these number lines are going to be going from zero to one. And it'll be split into four parts, just like your fraction bar, just like your fraction circle, just like your, your group. It's split into four parts. I've got one, two, three, four parts. They might be labeled one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, and one whole. That's your four-fourths. You might also see this two-fourths with its equivalent fraction one-half. Um, on a number line, we can also show one-fourth by shading from zero all the way up to one-fourth. That would be one-fourth of this number line. All of these are different ways to represent one-fourth. It would be parts of a group. Or a fraction bar. A fraction circle. or a number line. Again, these are things you should have seen coming up from third and fourth grade, but we think a review is a good thing to do. All right, um, let's look at the actual number of the fraction itself. You'll see um, a number on top that is the part that is being talked about in the problem, and then the number on the bottom represents the whole. So for our fraction up here that was one-fourth, our whole had one, two, three, four pieces. That's the number on the bottom. And the part that we were talking about, the part that was shaded, was one. One piece was shaded, so that's what we put on the top. Um, and other examples of this might be two-thirds. That would be something cut into three pieces, and two of those pieces would be shaded. Or you might see a fraction like one half. That would be something cut into two pieces, and we're only talking about one of those pieces. And one last example, maybe one eighth. That would be a whole cut into eight parts, 
and only one of those pieces would be shaded. Okay. The vocabulary words for you to remember on this one are going to be numerator and denominator. elementary teacher probably had you remember those by denominator having a D like down that's the one on the bottom numerator is the other one the one on top questions that you kind of ask yourself with these numerator tells you how many pieces do you have and denominator tells you how many pieces are in the whole The last thing that we're going to put in our notes, um, we're going to put one big number line at the very bottom of your page. We're going to label three very important numbers on there, and these are called benchmarks. You're going to label it with zero on one end, one on the other end, and one half in the middle. Most of the fractions that we're talking about, you should be able to place generally where they go. Not perfect, but on the correct side of one half, um, just by looking at the number. Something you might have noticed about fractions that equal one half in the past is that the numerator is always half of the denominator. Like when we did one half, one is half of two. When we did two fourths, two is half of four. Or something like three sixths or four eighths. The numerator is always half of the denominator. So if I gave you a fraction like um, seven eighths, if I had a denominator of 8, I know 4 eighths would be half. 7 eighths must be more than that. So I should be able to place 7 eighths on this side of that number line, maybe like over here-ish. Or if I gave you a number like 1 sixth, I know that if I have a sixth in the denominator, 3 sixths would be 1 half. So 1 sixth must be less than half. I could put one six over here-ish. Being able to place these, these fractions on the correct side of one half is gonna be a super important skill for you in comparing fractions. Um, so that's what we're gonna have you practice over on your left side. Over here, you're gonna draw one big number line with zero, one half, and one. And just see if you already coming up from third and fourth grade can place these fractions generally where you think that they go. It's okay if they're not perfect as long as they're on the right side of one half. Um, so let's try placing one eighth, um, two thirds, about seven ninths, and three-sixths. All right, take a shot at placing those on your number line and be ready to show your teacher tomorrow. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir? You're only half the fraction I am. <laughs>